Hi and welcome to this DCP web tutorial. In today's tutorial I'm going to show you how to create a custom Windows 10 desktop background using GIMP. So if you're watching my YouTube channel and my tutorials you'll notice that every time I create a new video I've got a different desktop background and I'm using GIMP to create these backgrounds. So I'm going to show you how to do that today. So the first thing we need to do is open up GIMP software. And you need to check what size your desktop is running. Now normally when I create YouTube videos, I'm creating them at 1080p resolution. So if I right click and go to display settings, you'll see in here it says 1920 by 1080. But the default resolution is actually 256 by 1080. But I leave it at 1920 by 1080 because most devices will be able to view them correctly at that resolution like your television or your phones or different devices so I recommend creating um, desktop backgrounds if you're making YouTube videos at 1920 by 1080 but if you're just doing it for fun and you just want a custom desktop background for your computer then you can create it at any resolution that's applicable for your machine so we're going to today we're going to do it at 1920 by 1080 that's what we need to know so let's go to GIMP and let's create a new document new and we want it at 1920 by 1080 and in this example, we're going to create, uh, create a 72 DPI, 72 DPI here. And we're going to fill it with a transparency. We'll click OK. So we've got our basic empty blank desktop uh, background here. So we want to put a nice image in there, right? So you look at my desktop, you see it's a nice, really nice picture. So we can go to Unsplash and we can download a really nice picture. So let's look on Unsplash. I'll put a link to this uh, website in the YouTube description as well. And we'll look at something like, um, let's look at architecture today. So you can see all these different images, all these different backgrounds that you can choose. You can experiment. Maybe we'll look at something different. Let's, um, let's do, let's have a look at film. What's in film? Well, let's look for London, right? This is where I live, so let's look for something London based. So let's um, we could do like the Houses of Parliament, would be nice, right? So, all these places I know are quite familiar to me. Um, let's take this one, this one looks really cool, right? So, let's take this image and click download free. So, you can download any image you like. I'll put a link to the main website in the YouTube description. We'll open up this folder. Let me just make a quick note here. And I'll also put a link to this same image that I'm using as well. And we drag and drop that into this folder. You can download any, any image you want. Really, when you're looking at the images, you want to aim for something that is in landscape. So you want something that's wide rather than something that's tall. You can use tall images as well, but try and look for something that's sort of landscape rather than a, a tall image like this, because you're going to have to crop it anyway, right? But you can use any image. In fact, let's take this taller image and I'll show you an example of that as well that would be a good idea probably right to do that let's drag and drop um, that image the taller image into the folder as well so I'll make a note of that image as well for you um, let's uh, go back here and copy this okay so we'll close down the browser we've got two images one's like a landscape and one's a portrait you can think of it that way and let's make two different desktop backgrounds using these. So let's go back to GIMP. And in that folder, we'll just drag and drop the uh, first one in. And this image is way bigger than what the canvas size is. So if I hold down the control key and use my mouse wheel, I can zoom in and out. If I hold down the middle mouse button, I can pan across. And this yellow box represents the actual size of the image. And this is our target size in the middle. This is our canvas size. So what I find is easier is to reduce the opacity here. So bring down the opacity and then use the resize tool here, size or the scale tool. So we'll click on scale and we'll click on the image and then we just left click and drag inwards like this. And we want to drag to a point where uh, we've still got a gap around the edge, right? So we don't drag too far. You don't want to drag like this. You want to drag it so you can still see like the little dots in the background it's covering over like this this will be pretty good so let's go ahead and click scale here and once we've done that we can increase the opacity and now we can see what the image looks like 
as a desktop background. We might want to adjust this slightly so you can use the move tool and you can click on the image. Let's click on the move tool and we can drag the image up or down. We want to try and center it out like this. So you can add text if you want. You don't have to, but you can add some text. So let's add some text as an example. So normally I'll click on this transparent layer above. It's transparent, so we can just go ahead and click on the text tool. Then we can click on the canvas here. And I just might write www.ecqweb.co.uk. I'm just going to type in my um, my uh, website address. Let's set it to like 120. Let's select this here. 120. So this is the font size. It's set to Verdana. Maybe we'll choose a better font. Let's choose something like, um, let's see. We use this for exa as an example. It's only an example. And we can click on the move tool. <clears throat> and then we can place that um, text wherever we like. We can center it out here somewhere like this. So you can see on my example, on my desktop, it's kind of like this. So I spent a bit more time doing it, but you can uh, invest that time to, to make the text exactly as you like. I don't really like this text. I'm probably just going to delete it and not use it. So I'll get rid of that. And we just got the desktop background as it is right now. So let's save this as one file. Let's go to File, Export As. And we'll go to the desktop and on this folder, we'll call it, uh, we want to save it as a JPEG really, right? So let's select file types here and we'll use JPEG and we call it uh, DT desktop background dash zero one and click export and then export it. So we're going to apply the same logic, but for the other image. So let's click on this bottom layer and delete it because we've exported it now. And let's go to the folder here and we'll drag and drop in the taller picture into the layer stack here. And now you can see the image is much, much taller now. So let's resize it again, same logic. We'll click on the resize tool. Let's set the opacity down and then click on it and then we'll drag it inwards as well. And we'll drag it to something like this, should be good. So we'll leave a little gap around the edge here on the sides and click scale. And then we can increase the opacity all the way back up to the top. Let's set it back to 100. And now you can see what it looks like. And we probably want to adjust this a little bit. So let's um, click on the move tool. And we want to bring the image of Big Ben down a bit, right? We're going to kind of center that like this. Let's go to File, Export As. And we'll call this Background 02. And then click Export. And we'll export that one as well. We can close that in GIMP now. We don't need it anymore. And now we've got the two backgrounds, this one and this one. So to set the background, there's a few different ways you can do that. But the most easiest way is just to right click on the picture and then say set as desktop background. And now you can see that as the desktop background here. And we can try the other one. Let's right click and set it as desktop background. You can see that one here as well. You can just set them as default. So you could click on this tall picture and say set as desktop background. But you normally find that it won't really look that great, right? It just isn't set out quite right. I mean, you can do it that way as well. But um, depending on the image, it may not look quite right or it may come out okay. But I think it's worth putting the effort to create them exactly the way that you want at the right resolution. And then you're going to get the best result. So everything's centered out nicely and you can place it exactly where you want. So that's how you go about creating a desktop background using Windows 10. I'm going to right click here and go to personalize and then um, we will select the original one. If I click browse here, you can see all the different ones that I've created so far. So whenever I create a tutorial, normally every so often I'll create a different desktop background. But I'm going to set it back to the original one that I started off with. Okay, I hope you find that tutorial useful. And I look forward to seeing you on the next DCP web tutorial.